All right, we're starting today with our do now. Our do now asks us, what is one fourth of twenty-two? So one fourth of twenty-two. What we should remember from a long time ago is that if we want to know what one fourth of twenty-two is, then we need to multiply. Also, the word of often is an indicator in math of multiplication, um, which should remind us that this would be if I want to know one fourth of twenty-two, I need to know one fourth times 22. So when I go ahead and do this multiplication, top times top, bottom times bottom, it gives me 22 over 4. And as we go ahead and jump through that division, 22 divided by 4 goes in 5 times, remainder 2, decimal, decimal, and down the 0, goes in exactly 5 times. 5.5. One fourth of 22 is 5.5. This is going to be a super important concept for us today as we move forward with our work on finding consumer maps, etc., etc. Today, Kipsters will be able to solve consumer math problems. So, when we're talking about consumer math, we're talking about things that people buy or things that happen in the world of consumerism, things that are sold, things that are purchased, things that are, um, prices are changed, this and the other. Solve consumer math problems. So as we look at these key points today, we should have some reminders here that makes sense to us. We're looking at discount price. So the discount price of something is the original minus the rate that it's changed times the original price. Um, or we could say it's one minus the rate times the original price. So you can see that there's two ways that we can think about that problem. There's also two ways we can think about markup price as you can see from our um, key points. And commission, we'll talk a little bit about commission as we run into one of those problems. So the first problem we have is Peter's Pants Palace uh, advertises the following sale. Shirts are half off, pants are one-third off the original price, and shoes are one-fourth off the original price. So if we have a pair of shoes that originally cost, or excuse me, that cost $40, what is the sales price? So we have an original price of $40, and we're talking about a pair of shoes. So we know the cost here is that the cost is going to be um, for shoes one fourth off. All right. So we know that when we think about this, we kind of think about it in terms of this diagram here. Just really quickly, we see our price here, and we're going to be thinking about splitting this off into four pieces. And one of those fourths is going to be taken off. And the rest of it is going to remain. So as we think about this, our 0, 40, and each of these is 10, 20, and 30. So realistically, when we think about this, we can do this with this diagram. And this diagram helps us recognize that the one-fourth of this, one-fourth of the 40, is equal to 10. And that's the amount that's taken off over here. So this is the 10 that is taken off. And so we would need to subtract that amount that is taken off to give us the $30. So... Looking at this, this comes back to this idea that the discount price can be the original price, that's the 40, minus the rate times original price, that's this right here. That's one way to think about it. A different way to think about it is, well, if I'm looking at this and one-fourth of this is taken away, that's the part that we've kind of shaded over here in red, well, what actually remains? What actually remains here is three-fourths of the price. And that's going to be the price that you actually pay. And so we can see that kind of comes from the idea that we took one-fourth away from the one whole, 
And that left us with three fourths of the original price. So what I could actually do, is I could say, well, what is three fourths of the forty dollars? Because that's what's going to be my remaining price. Um, if I go ahead and multiply that out, I'm going to get three times forty, which is. 120 over 4. And that's going to tell me that my price is going to be $30. So really there's two ways to think about this discounted price. We can think about it as going through and doing multiple steps. The price here, um, we find the discount by finding what one-fourth of the $40 is then subtract that from the original price. Or we can think to ourselves, well, if we're taking off one-fourth, then three-fourths is what's going to remain. All right, so the next problem is, says, at Peter Pan's Pants Palace, um, a pair of pants is on sale for $20. What is the normal price of Peter's pants? So when we look at this one, Um, it's on sale for $22. So at some point, um, we know that this is one-third off since it is a pair of pants. At some point, one-third was taken off. And our current price is this $20. Which meant that two-thirds is equal to twenty dollars. So when I think about this, this one we really can't use um, the information that we had before. We're trying to figure out what this original price was over here. So we really need to think about an equation here. Alright, so one-third of the price was taken off and I can't really tell what that is, and this is supposed to be $22, so let me fix that. So two-thirds of the original price is what remains. So two-thirds of some original price is now equal to $22. So we can write this equation because we know that this two-thirds, what's remaining, is equal to what happens after the one-third is taken off. So two-thirds of some original price, two-thirds times some original price x is equal to 22. So to solve this, we'll divide both sides by two-thirds. That's going to tell me 22 Over one. And I'm going to switch this by multiplying by the reciprocal. And I can do some cross canceling here. This is 2 times 11. It's going to give me 33. So that tells me the original price is 33. And that makes sense because um, one third of 33 would be the $11 that was taken off. All right, the next problem talks about commission. A used car salesman um, receives a commission of one twelfth of the sales price for the, each car he sells. What is the sales commission on the car that sold for $21,999? So thinking about commission, what commission is is it's basically how a lot of people get paid that are in the sales business. The business wants to motivate the salesperson to sell more. Um, so they say, you know what? So the more you sell, the more you get. Because we're going to pay you some amount of whatever you sell. So this is an interesting life lesson, though. When you go to certain places where people are paid on commission, those people are intrinsically motivated to sell you more stuff. Even if you don't necessarily need or want more stuff, they may try to convince you to buy more stuff just because that means that they're going to get more money on their paycheck the next week. 
So looking at this, we know the salesperson is going to get one twelfth of the twenty-one thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. So we look at our kind of our diagram here, and this is broken up into twelfths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have twelve twelfths is twenty-one thousand. 999 and we actually really just need to know what 1 12th is because that's how much the salesperson is going to get. So this one's pretty simple. We think about this as um, our commission. He's going to get 1 12th of the 21,999 which realistically means that We're going to take this and end up dividing it by 12. So when we go ahead and do that division, when we go ahead and do that division, I'll go ahead and save you the trouble of actually doing this division. Um, we're going to get $1,833.25. So the salesperson um, sells you this car for $22,000 and walks away um, their cut is going to be $1,833.25. All right, moving on to the next one. Um, a furniture store wants to host a sales event to improve its profit margin and reduces its tax liability um, before its inventory is taxed, blah, 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 blah. How much is the profit the business will make on the sale of the couch that is marked up one-third and then sold for one-fifth off a discount of the original price. So when we think about markups, this is how businesses actually make money. So if you go to um, Target or whatever, and they are selling you something for $20, they probably bought that $20 item from the manufacturer for anywhere between $10 and $15. And so they're making what we call profit, which is the difference between however much they paid for it and how much they're actually selling it for. So we're told that the original price um, of the item, this is probably what the store purchased it for, is $2,400. So we're told that they're marking it up by one third. So that means that when we're thinking about this, they're taking the original price and they're actually adding on to it. So they've got the $2,400, and then they're taking another one-third of that $2,400, they're adding it onto the price. So when we look at the price here, we're going to have all of this plus this one-third of the original price. So there's really two ways that we can think about this. The first way is we can go ahead and find out how much that was that was added on that one-third of the $2,400. So that ends up being one-third, sorry, that ends up being 2400 over 3, which is going to give me 800 So I'm going to add that to the original price, and that tells me that the original price, or that the marked up price, $2,400, plus an extra $800 they added to the price, is $3,200. Alternatively, we can see that if we're breaking this down, all of these pieces are even here. So all of these pieces are even. And so if I look at this, this really means that the final price is really just one two, three, four thirds of the original price. So when I think about that, that goes back to that key point up at the top that says it's one plus the rate times the original price. So I have four thirds times 2400. It's just an alternative way to do it. Um, so that's going to give me Four times twenty four hundred over three. And when I do that, that's gonna go ahead and give me 
3,200. So same answer, just two different ways of doing it. Me, personally, I'm going to prefer doing the one-step method that we see here on the right because it's also going to be a lot easier when it comes to equations. Now, when we look at this, though, this question also tells us that after they've marked it up, they're actually going to sell it for a discount of one-fifth off. So they're going to take that 3200 they're going to break it into five pieces here and they're going to take one-fifth off the price. So again, there's two methods here of calculating how much they're taking off the price. One would be to say, all right, I know they're taking one-fifth of the price off, one-fifth of 3200 um, which is going to be equal to 640 dollars. which means that the final price is the 3200 minus the $640. And that's going to give me $2,560. Now again, alternatively, remember we can also think about this as, well, what remains of the price is four of those fifths. So four fifths of the $3,200. Um, is going to be 4 times 3,200 divided by 5. Um, so that ends up being the same thing as 640 times 4, which is the same $2,560. Now, the question actually here is, what is the profit? So we're trying to figure out how much money they actually made. So they pot it for... $2,400 and they sold it for um, $2,560. So even though it's on sale, quote unquote, they're still actually making $2,560 minus $2,400. They're actually still making $160. All right, last one. It says a motorcycle dealer paid a certain price for um, a motorcycle and marked it up by one-fifth of the price he paid. Um, later, he sold it for $14,000. So this is the price after it was marked up. So if we think about this, this means that we have the original price, 0 to, 14, 0 to some number, and they added on to that price another one-fifth of that. So we have the whole thing here. Then we have an extra fifth added on here. So for this one, it's there's only really one good way to do that. And when we think about this, that means that right now the price is six-fifths of what it originally was. So originally, we have no idea what it is. That's our question mark over here. But we know that after we found what that six-fifths was, the price is now $14,000. So we need to go ahead and divide by six-fifths. And that's going to give me that x is equal to $14,000 divided by six-fifths, which is the same thing as multiplying by five-sixths of $14,000. And when we go ahead and do that math, and when we go ahead and do that, we're going to get that this is $11,666 and approximately 67 cents. So when we go back to our key points up here, really things that we need to think about is there's really two ways to do it. Personally, I prefer the second way uh, when we're talking about discounts and markups, uh, where I'm just going to figure out, well, what fraction is there after we add or subtract away from that price. And for commission, it's really simple. We're just ended up finding the rate or that percentage of um, whatever was sold, because that's how much is going to go to the salesperson. All right, so looking at this, um, 
make sure that you're using your notes carefully as you walk through the Together Time work. So now would be the time. Go ahead and pause the video and work through your partner work time um, by yourself. Once you've got that done, um, or once you've got a problem done, move on over to the next part of the video um, to go ahead and start checking some of that work. So make sure that you're doing the work before you're checking it. Okay, so looking at our partner work time, uh, we're just going to jump through some of these problems really quickly. Um, so looking at this first one, this is a commission problem, so we're just trying to figure out what 1 32nd of the sales of $24,000 is. So this is pretty simple. It's $24,000 times that 1 32nd. Um, thinking about this as kind of like the big giant fraction bar that's broken up into really tiny, tiny, tiny pieces. Um, this is zero, 24,000. This little tiny piece is one thirty second of that. All right. Okay, so next one, um, the cost of $1,200. So you can see that I've written this out as the original cost. The original cost here is $1,200. So I've got my fraction bar over here. And there's two different ways of doing this. I can take off the one-fifth, so find out what the one-fifth is. It's $240 and subtract that from the price. Or um, the more efficient way is to say, all right, well, there's four-fifths remaining over here of my price. So four-fifths of the $1,200 is what's remaining, $960. So as we head down to the next one, we see that a pair of Jordans is on sale for one fourth off. The discounted price is $72. Um, what is the original price of the shoe? So the discounted price after the one fourth is taken off is $72. So we can see that I've denoted that here. Um, we're looking for this original price. So that means that we know of what's remaining of the original price is three fourths. So three fourths of the original price is equal to $72. And so we can go ahead and write that out, solve it out. We're going to get 96. Next one is a markup problem. So this one is really marked up. It's seven-fifths of the original price is added on. So you can see that um, as I'm looking at it here, I have this is the original price that was paid for it plus one whole, that's five-fifths, and two more fifths. So when we look at how this compares to the original price, we now have 12 fifths of the original price. So 12 fifths of the original price that we don't know what is, is now equal to $24,000. So 12 fifths of the original price, this unknown price, is equal to $24,000. Um, going through and solving that equation, we end up getting $10,000. And the last one, so this is really just got to read very carefully here. So after resting, so after her heart rate decreased by two-fifths, her rate is 60 beats per minute. What was her heart right after she immediately ran? So that's an unknown um, what it was before we took away this two-fifths that I see I've taken away over here which means that currently her heart rate which is 60 is three-fifths of the unknown original um, heartbeats per minute is equal to 60 so we're going to divide by three-fifths on both sides and as we do the math we're going to find out that that is 100 beats per minute alright go ahead and take this time um, if you need any questions or you've got some confusion, go ahead and jump on over um, and join us in the lesson. If you're feeling really confident and really comfortable, go ahead and move on over to your alone time.